Hi, Nair. Hi, how are you? How are you? Um, it's been a long time. I don't know if you remember, but we spoke to each other about five years ago in a very small place in the Netherlands. Yeah. I do remember, yeah. It was in about some world very, shadow, your previous some, book. In some very small town. I don't remember which. I don't know. Me neither. But it was in a church or something. It was yeah, I think it was a beautiful in a church. place. Yeah. yeah. And now it's really weird to, to see in, in these circumstances. Um, we were supposed to talk to each other in Amsterdam as well. But mm -hmm. now you're there in Israel, I'm here in Amsterdam. And uh, my, my, my first question I always ask in these weird times, how are you doing during this crisis at home? Is it, uh, can you work? Are you able to work? Do you do other things? How are you doing? Well, uh, I spent a lot of time with my son in the last uh, three or four months. Uh, it was really a challenge to, especially when there was no kindergarten, to make him interested. So I think that we played so many imaginary games that I couldn't remember in the morning if I'm a Captain John Hook Pudra, or I'm the, this robot, or that robot, or I'm the bad robot, I'm the good robot. So okay. we spent a lot, a lot of time together. And it's lucky that I have some imagination that we can really work uh, with all these games. Uh, I, I didn't work a lot, but uh, I tried to work. You know, it was very hard to write. Yeah. I think it's a difficult time for everyone. You know, it, you can't complain only about yourself. It's a difficult time for the unemployed people. It's a difficult time for everyone. Yeah, I understand. And and of course, the promotion of your last book that we're going to talk about, Aan het einde van de nacht, uh, was also very different than you're used to. I mean, all the traveling was banned. You were supposed to come to the Netherlands and probably you were supposed to travel across Europe as well. Um, so how, how, how did it go, the, the promotion? abroad for your new book in the translations? Well, it was just came out in Netherlands and Germany, so I, lo I lost two trips. Okay. Uh, the, ne the Netherlands uh, uh, trip, I, I, was, I was more sorry. It was more difficult not to come to Netherlands because I like Netherlands. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but you know, uh, we did what we, I did what I can, uh, interviews and stuff. But, you know, it's such a, a, a great event from so many perspectives. That you can only think about yourself, you know, I do think about myself, but you understand that you're in a, in a situation that something has changed significantly, yeah. especially for, at least for the, for the foreseeable future. So, you know, I felt frustrated, but, uh, you know, you look around and you, 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 you feel that many people shared your feeling. Yeah. Do you, did you ever have the urge um, uh, in the last few months to write about the crisis? Because in the Netherlands, now we see the first Corona novels uh, appearing. I already? Think two, yeah, already there are one. No, already three uh, have been published already. Um, do, do you have the same in Israel? Do you have to, the urge to write something about this global crisis or more personal from your home? Well, you know, uh, it, it, I, I don't think that literature for me, at least writing, working this way, you know, I need to uh, process things and to think about uh, things and to, yeah. to imagine certain uh, situations. Uh, so I can say that I wanted to write about Corona. I wanted to kill Corona, but I can't say I wanted to write about it. No, I understand. Well, it was interesting that you just said that for me to write about something, uh, it takes a long time for me to process things, uh, things that I've been through, things that I've, that I've seen, that I've heard. Um, your last book, and Einde van de Nacht, which is, I mean, I thought it was a very, very moving book in very many ways, in the writing, but also uh, uh, in the story. Um, and in many uh, senses, this book is about remembering things, about, about memories of a, of a childhood. In, your, in the first two books that were translated in the Netherlands, uh, World Shadow and Good People, you, you had big world events. You had in World Shadow, you had the globalization of the 90s. In Good People, you had a person from Nazi Germany and from Stalin's Soviet Union uh, 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 telling the story. Studies so were big events. In this novel, it's it seems more intimate. You go more back to your. It's very personal book. You you said in many interviews it's very autobiographical. You turn inwards more. Is was that a deliberate decision? What had that something to do with something in your life, or or how how did it come about? Well. Uh, in 2014, uh, my best friend uh, Uri uh, committed suicide. Yeah, uh, it's dedicated we, to him, the book. Yeah, and, and we were very close friends since we like been like seven. And uh, it's not just that he was a close friend of mine, I think that he was in a way 
uh, very close to my soul, to my memories, you know, every experience in childhood and even later was attached to him and it was a very positive uh, uh, presence in my life. Uh, so, so I couldn't write about anything in the beginning and in some point I felt that, uh, you know, this is like something that you cannot uh, overcome without writing about for me. For me, all the time, you know, I used to, you know, to transfer uh, demons and dreams and fears into stories. And even if I did it in the Second World War, you know, the beginning of the, the good, good people is also attached to the mother death. So, you know, so even in the Second World War and World, World Shadow, it was always a lot for me came to the book. My experiences, my memories, you know, it, just hitting at the different masks. Okay. This was very, this was more personal and more uh, direct, only because I, I didn't feel I can write about something else. And, uh, and you know, literature, to be, to spend this time in, in the imaginary world of literature and to bring all these uh, feelings to the liter literary world was very um, relieving for me in a way. It was a, a difficult experience, but it was very, it was the only thing I, I, I could do in this point, basically. Okay. Because the, the, the story is basically set up uh, in three central parts. It evolves around three very specific points in, in the narrative, in, in, in the boy, this boy's life called Jonathan. Before we go any further, Jonathan didn't, doesn't have a name, I understand, in the, in the original text. Why, why, why is, isn't, didn't he have a name? Uh, because in Israel, <coughs> sorry, because in Israel I felt that uh, uh, people know me uh, and know my family, and I just felt it, was, it would be strange to, to come out with a different name. Uh, even though Jonathan was always the, the name that, in my mind, but I just felt that people would always say, uh, that the readers will feel, and I will feel that it's not really authentic because it's, it's, it's been so many places, you know, in Betakerem, in Jerusalem, in, in, the, in the childhood. So I just, in the end, I just didn't feel uh, in Israel that it's something that I can do. Uh, but outside of Israel, I, I came back to the original plan to call him Jonathan. Basically, also in the, in the Hebrew novel, his name was, was Jonathan, but in the end, I just changed it. Okay, okay. So you have, uh, the, 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 the book starts out with Jonathan waking up in Mexico somewhere. He's been at a literary festival. He's very um, confused. He doesn't, he's disoriented. He doesn't know where he is, what he's done. Um, so basically that's one part of the story. Jonathan being in Mexico, the festival is long gone, it's over. He has to go home to his wife, to his child, but he doesn't want to go home. He doesn't know if he can go back, if there's something for him there. Um, and then he starts thinking basically about his life and he starts thinking back. And you have two other parts that it's uh, at the end of the 90s. Uh, where they do their exams. They're about 18, 19 years old. Uh, he and his best friend, Joel. And uh, another storyline is where Joel and Jonathan are smaller boys, so about 12 years old. And it's, in the, it's, it's set in the 80s, in the, in, the, in the neighborhood in Jerusalem. And uh, let's start with the 12-year-old boys, Jonathan and Joel. They have a very specific kind of friendship. Um, do you think there is something about friendship between boys very 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 different what's so special about those 12 year old boys uh, 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 being together living together and imagining things together yeah i do i think that uh, that you know uh, this this friendship uh, has a lot of the material that co that connected to israel and to jerusalem you know it, it, to the to the certain violence that you can feel uh, among among uh, children but it's all over the world a certain fascination about uh, the soldiers, even when they are very young, you yeah. know, they groom to be soldiers. And also it was a very close and strict neighborhood with very, very uh, strict rules and very, very well, very, it was like, you need to know how to behave. You need to know how to be part of this group. And they never felt really part of this, uh, of this group of people and their laws and they wanted something else. They, they were very drawn to the imaginary places. Also, I think that for them, imagination was a way to get out of the mediocre uh, life of, ch of uh, children in this uh, neighborhood in this time in Jerusalem, when, when the neighborhood was everything that you had, you had nothing yeah. else. And I think that imagine, uh, imagine that they are in something bigger, that they, are, they can be more important, that they can fight this fight with the, 
the, the children from the lower, the, from the high towers, they have this imaginary fight with the children of the high towers. I think that for them, it's, it's, a, it's a mechanism of survival. It's to imagine, to be inside the ima ima imagination and to really, really play this role that they invented to themselves. I think it's a mechanism of survival for them. It's, it's something that they cannot really find any way to cope with reality. And I think this is, this uh, create a very strong connection between them because when you imagine something together and you're in this adventure together and you're in this imaginary world together, there is something that, that there is this symbiotic tendencies that you cannot really uh, change. I think this is something they experience throughout their life. This is why the story begins with the 80s, the, the, the past, because this is the, the formative experience. Is it also a shelter for, like you were saying, the, the violence around them? Because for other boys in the neighborhood, it's very uh, normal to, to, to begin fights, not only with the boys in, in, in the big towers, but also there's this gruesome scene later in the novel where uh, a group of boys here, there's a group of Arab people, boys uh, ro roaming around the city somewhere, and they all want to go there to thrash them, to beat them up. And Joel and Jonathan don't really know what to do. Is that, th that the violence they see around them every day and for which they shelter in their own kind of world? Well, I think that for, for children in Israel, in my, when I was a child, yeah. you know, th this scene was actually something that happened in our neighborhood. You know, there was this terror attack, attack that someone uh, stabbed uh, uh, an Israeli, a Jew person, yeah. and then the kids wanted to react. You know, this was like the atmosphere. They wanted to react, to find something, someone who is Arabic, and to react. Yeah. It, was, it, it wasn't something that was unfamiliar, you know, and it, and it, and it, it didn't have to result in violence, no. The violence was very evident in our life. Uh, I remember that, you know, that we, we, we saw the soldier coming back from the first intifada. In, it was in the, in the, kinder, in the high school uh, uh, playground when we played football. So it, it was like we were fascinated from this. It was something that we always felt we would be part of. It was something that was very interesting for us. In order to be a man, you have to be a part of it. And, and, and I think that this, this, these two friends, uh, Jonathan and and Joel doesn't really feel part of it, and he doesn't really want want to be part of it. And it's not coming from a political point of view; it's coming from this point of view. That as children, they want to rebel against the neighborhood and against all this world. And and I think that this is also also in their adventure, there is some violence. You know, in their imaginary imaginary world, there is some violence. There is a fight. Yeah. There is, they want they want to destroy the kids from the higher tower. Which shows you that even when they escape, they, they can't really escape the, the certain violence that they have. But also, I think that for them, imagination is it, a creative force, and I think it's a creative force. It's a place when they can create, when they can build, when they can invent. And I think that this is the only thing that they are really good at when they are very small. But there comes a point, especially for Jonathan. Uh, I'm not sure about Joel actually, but especially for Jonathan, where he doesn't know anymore what what if the memories are are real or not, or that he imagined them, or and they sometimes they just pop up in his ordinary life, basically throughout the whole book, doesn't matter what age he is. So instead of a shelter, it becomes also almost a kind of a problem uh, 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 for him because he doesn't he can't even see anymore. The, the, this, the, 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 the distinction between certain times or certain places about that with his memories. So how do you see that? It's all, it also turns against him a little bit. Well, I think that, uh, you know, that for, for him, memories and imaginations are, are very important tools in his writing as a writer. So I think yeah. the, base, the basic uh, uh, experience of the book that there, was, there were two children that you know they immerse themselves in this imaginary world and in the in this memories and this relationship wasn't really always good. There was a lot of betrayals between them. I think that uh, that each of them wanted to get out in a certain point, to get out of this imaginary imaginary world, even as children. You know, Joel tried to find a girlfriend when he's twelve. Yeah. So so they are immersed in this world, and, and then in some point, Jonathan, who is the writer, find a way to cope with it. So writing, because to use this imagine, imagination and memories, and it's not really important if it's true or not true. I no. think that you can you can play with it and you can work with it. I think that that both of them feel that something happened there in their childhood that they cannot really overcome. 
that it's something that they can't really understand. It was like this, this kingdom uh, that they both together discovered the world, understood the world together, and they cannot really uh, overcome it. It's, 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 it's something that comes and, and attack them all the time. And I think that Yoel couldn't find a way to cope with it. And the, and the writer Jonathan could find something to do with it. it. It doesn't mean that it's not all the time in his mind. But I think it, it's a story about about how childhood and all this transfer, you know, all this experience when you are young, uh, 12, 18, are something that uh, it's very hard to shake off. And yeah. sometimes, and sometimes you don't really understand why. So it's like an investi investigation of friendship but also about the past, what really happened in the past. And you see that each of them have different version to what happened in the past all the time. And this is also something, a source of tension uh, between them. You say that Jonathan can cope with that, that boyhood world, basically with all these memories by becoming a writer. But throughout the book, uh, it has been said to him from, from different uh, points of view, that it also basically writing about these events takes something away from these events as uh, as well uh, about the, the the magic of the of the of the events at one point he even says that if you really want to hold on to a specific memory don't write about it or it's different words but it's something like that is that your experience as well so you have this very vivid images of your childhood or, or of your friendship uh, uh, from your youth um, and are there certain images or scenes or stories you won't tell just to protect them from from being written literally it's just always better in the imagination you know when i write something i always see it in my mind you know if i don't see it in my mind i don't write about it no. so i have i have to see the scene and i have to, i have to really see see it in my mind and then write it and and in this this transformation between seeing it and really really see everything in very very colorful way, but also very nuanced way. And to write it, you lose something. It's, it's, I experienced it, I think, in every scene I wrote in my life. Uh, how do you deal with that, Mir, when, when you experience that? How do you, is it something, like, okay, well, that's it, I, I lost it now, it's, it's gone, I, I've written it down, or is, is that a mourning process, or, or is it, or is well, that too well, big? Well, there, there is always a mourning process, but you know, at least, you know, at least uh, in some points, during the writing, you can really experience yourself when you are 12 and, and 18, you know. Yeah. When, I, when I wrote the novel, there were these days, you know, that at four o'clock when I stopped writing and I, and I came out to Tamar, to Tamar and my, my son, to my wife and my son, I really felt that I, I was there, you know, because I, 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 have this, I have this ability, it's not very unique maybe, but to really, really, with strong imagination, you know, push myself, into this time while seeing yeah. it. So, and I think that this is very interesting experience and sometimes it's a, it's, it's a present, you know, it's a, it's, it's a way to, to come back in a certain way. You, can, you cannot really totally come back, but in some point you, you will feel 94, really, you will feel 88. And then you can also feel, you know, uh, Uri, my best friend that committed suicide, even though he's not exactly like you and I'm not exactly like Jonathan. And you know, there, I got a lot of letters in, in Israel when the book was published, like hundreds of hundreds of letters from readers that wrote me about their high school and about their childhood. And they always wrote me that, that they can't believe that everything that in the book is really happened. And I told them 50% didn't really happen. There wasn't this yellow fog that engulfed Peter Kerem and, uh, yeah. and, and we couldn't see anything. And, and also a lot, of, a lot of things didn't really happen. But, but I think that the, 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 the important thing is that when you are writing, it, it happened, it didn't happen, you have to sit in a very way as a writer. And then, as, 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 as we said, uh, when, you, when you start to write it, you always lose, do something. You know, it's like when you start to write a novel, you always have these hopes and expectations. You know, you have like uh, billions of ide millions of ideas. No, oh, millions is too much. You have like dozens of ideas for, for characters, yeah. for events. And, and in the way, it's... It, it's getting, it's shrinking all the time, you know, it's shrinking all the time and you have to let go some things. And I think that this is part of the, of the writing. Yeah, because for, to me, it, it, it's a book about a friendship. It's a book about loss. We get to talk about that later, a loss of a mother, a loss of a friend. But it's definitely also a book about, about 
literature and, and, and what literature or storytelling uh, can do. Did, did you set out to be, to, to make the book about that aspect of, of writing also, or, or did it just appear in the book because it was about the memories? It was about remembering your childhood, your friend and the, the war, the, everything. Well, you know, I, I never really think about uh, what the novel is about. You know, I, I had, I knew that it would be about them, about these two friends. Uh, and, you know, I started to write the novel uh, when I was in Netherlands in 2015, I think. And the, and the only thing I saw in the beginning was two guys, two boys, digging a, digging a, digging a tunnel yeah. in a body in the winter. And, and it, it, it didn't really happen to us only in a small way, but when I thought it was different. And this is how I begin to, to create this friendship uh, between them that part of it was true and part of it was not. And all the other things came later, you know, because the, the protagonist is a writer, so, and he's, he experienced something with his past, his best friend uh, might commit suicide. He tells uh, uh, Jonathan, the, the, the protagonist tell other people that in Mexico that his, his friend, that his best friend already died when he didn't die yet, you know? Yeah. So why, why did he do it? So I think because all of this, it, it, all, it, it was always also about writing, not really about literature, about writing and what yeah. you can achieve in writing. And I think that the interesting thing is that Yoel always felt that when Jonathan is writing about their past, he also kills it. And I think yeah. this is where, where this idea comes from, that, that, that he's like the real keeper of the past, Yoel, because he tells the story, he lived the story. He, he came back to live in, in his parents' house close to the body when he's older, because he wanted to, to be close to what happened to them. And writing about it is a process of, you know, of letting go, of making it to a story, and then you lose something in this experience, in, yeah. this, in, this, in, the, in, the, in the real experience. And so, so I think it was not, it, it was very natural that you be also about writing, but I think it really about this friendship and about, uh, and about also about growing up. I think it, it, it's really about childhood and growing up and what does it mean to be a man? Because you know, the end of the book, the last chapters is about them when, we're, when they are uh, older, when they are 35, 36. So I think it, 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 it tries to understand this process in this specific uh, circumstances. You were saying that Joel, that's a very moving part of the book as well, that he's moving back to his parents' house. He doesn't do really well. He became a, a lawyer in his life. But, uh, and actually everybody, he was, thought he was going to be a very successful man. He was going to be, he was very much loved, a very social uh, kind of boy. But then it, and it appears that he just needs to go back to his roots, to, to, to his childhood life, to be as close uh, to the places he, he spent with Joel, like you were saying. And at one point in the book, he's saying, he's talking about the core of things uh, that Jonathan maybe has lost. He's the keeper of the core of, of the, what, what do you mean by that? The core of, of their experiences? Well, I think that what, what uh, Joel meant is that uh, because he never wrote about it and because he didn't become a writer and, 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 and create all these stories about it, which also makes it uh, more remote and, and, and far away from you in a way when you're starting to write about it. He's like the only person that really reliving this experience all the time. Like reliving yeah. childhood all the time, without writing about it, without telling stories, without inventing uh, this. But he's like really there in the body, in his body and his soul, and and all the rest is like is like a certain lie. Yeah. So I think that in a way he can admire admire Jonathan writing, but he doesn't he doesn't really feel that it, it can touch what happened to them because you know there is this sense that uh, for for him that when you are writing about it. You cannot really describe what happened, the fullness of what happened to them as children. This, this feeling of both of them against the world, in this imaginary world, in the, in the yellow fog, which was real in the novel. And you feel that there's not, that there's not, there is no ability to really write about it and describe it. And, uh, and I think that this is a, a gap between them. Uh, and I, th I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people that can't find a way to live with, it, with their memories and can't find a level to, to, to live with their childhood, it's very hard for them to become adults. This is part of, of life. Definitely. And also it's, 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 it's a beautiful story about a friendship, but also about 
trying to hold on to a friendship. I think you have experienced that, I have experienced that, many of our viewers may have experienced that, that, that your childhood friends, however close you were, there they become points where you get separated. That's, that's life. But it will also ever always be this, this tie, uh, this thing that ties you together, like Joel and Jonathan later in life. But yeah. how I, I think, by the way, I think that there is a question for the readers of the book, if they are really such good friends all the time, as you said. Yeah, well, I was, I was thinking that myself, because you, you, yeah. you talk about it a lot in the book, that it's about loyalty as well. How loyal are you to your friends in every single situation? When do you choose for yourself, or when do, do you lose track of the, of the, of the darkness and the, and, the, and the demons of your, of your friend? Um, is, is that something you've, after your, your good friend died and, and he committed suicide, were asking you these questions? Did they, did they bother you? Did, did, they, did you have to think about these questions a lot? Did, was I a good friend? Is that something? Yeah, you know, I thought about it. Was I good, a good friend? Were we such good friends like I thought since childhood? Uh, is, is, is the story in my mind really true? Uh, you know, I discovered uh, things about him and things about that I you know that I didn't know that changed some of my perspective. Yeah. Uh, so, so after he died, everything was was in question for me. There was this grieving process, but you know, and and then there was a tendency to to think about it, this in glo and to glo glorify everything, all this friendship. And then there was the process when you really think about it and try to understand. What really happened there? Uh, maybe I didn't really know him since I, be, I didn't really know him since we were ch children. Maybe he didn't really know me as I th as I thought. So, so I think that in a way the novel is like an investigation of friendship. And you know, and when you read the novel, you see that there are many betrayals between them all the time. It's not like an ideal friendship. There was there, there there is no loyalty. There is a very strong connection and a very strong symbiotic this symbiotic tendency because they they learn to understand and interpret the world together. But I don't, I'm not sure that there was loyalty there. And, and, it, and I, th I think that in a way they were just found each other when they were children and there was nothing else. So I think all these questions were very in my mind and very vivid in my mind when I wrote the book. And also, you know, I always knew that I will write about the 90s and the 80s in Jerusalem because it was very, very vivid in my mind, regardless of this friendship anyway. Yeah, the story is about a loss of a, of a friendship, of a, of a very close uh, a friend, but also of a mother. Uh, that's a very important storyline in, in the book as well. And there's this, because in the in, 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 in story, Jonathan's mother uh, becomes ill and, and, and she dies at, at when, when, when he's finishing high school, basically, and he's going to be a grown-up man, uh, looking, having to look after himself. But it was a very difficult time for him, not only because his mother was dying, but he wasn't able to address, he didn't know how to address the, the, the illness of his mother and his mother couldn't cope with Jonathan seeing her being ill, with seeing her as a woman she didn't want to be. Um, I think that's a very specific point of view to write about such an illness, especially the part is very moving because the mother wished that Jonathan could have seen her actually before he was born. She was, that, that's, that's, that's the tragic, tragic, tragic of children, for your mother, my mother, uh, uh, that, that we don't know how our mothers and our fathers were when we weren't there. So that, 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 I think that's a very beautiful um, uh, aspect of the book. Did you ever consider, because the book is about imagining things, about remembering things, to, make, to maybe make that up, the, a storyline about the mother living before Jonathan was there, or was that... Yeah. Too much. Would, it, would no, you be I, able to conjure that up? I did think about it, and uh, I might do it someday, or, or no, or not. But uh, I, I, I did think about it a lot because it was very strong in her mind, and she really wanted. It was, this was very, really, as I said, a very a desire of her that I will meet this woman that was there before I was born, because I was the last, the the, the last boy in the family. Uh, so it was very, it was very vivid in in this in our conversation. That there was this woman that I will never know, and if I had known her, everything was different. Uh, but uh, but also, you know, 
it's also a book that you know that deals with with the, uh, the last year of high school. You know, yeah. I think that that many readers can identify with this feeling. Uh, you know that that you want to be alive and you want to experience. And and they were very, they were quite wild uh, boys he, he, he and Yoel in 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 the last year of high school. And and so so there is this, and you feel in the book you really feel high school and the experiences and first kisses and and thinking about sex and all this, and it's very vivid in the book, because the book is not just about uh, the dead, it's also about the life. Yes. And, and, and in the same time, in his house, his mother is very sick. So, so every time he goes out and try to experience high school and try to be, to be, you know, to really experience it, because you always feel that you're missing something in, in this uh, point in your life, and you really want that something big will happen to you, and you will, you will really, uh, you know, be free and sometimes be wild. And, and every time you go back to your house, there is this dead death of your mother that is overshadow everything. I think it was very hard for him to 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 navigate in this in this in this atmosphere because it was such different experiences to be out and to be in. And when he was out, he felt guilty because he was trying to experience happiness in a certain way or trying to to maneuver his way in high school because he felt guilty to his mother. And I think that this guilt is very strong. In, inside him uh, since this happened because the guilt is because he's alive, maybe very alive, and he sees that she's going to die. And this gap between them is getting wider and wider. And even when he talks to her and to try to support her, he can't really understand what she's going through. Now, and for all these different storylines, for all these, these, these memories and all these, 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 these imaginary, imaginary scenes. And, and you have chosen a very beautiful form and also a very beautiful kind of language almost. It's, it's, when you start a book, I have to be very honest, it's, it's sort of, it's overwhelming. Uh, your sentences are exuberant. Um, your, your, your story goes from here to there. Uh, you don't know sometimes which is the past or the present, but you, you, you stay with the story. That's absolute the power of the whole book. But it's also a very intricate, it's not a thread you, you follow. It's, it's like a tapestry, basically. You see the whole thing being woven together while you read the book. And I think that's, uh, that must be a very, very different, difficult, I mean, difficult process uh, by writing. So you don't start with A, you've got a very clear starting point, obviously. Jonathan waking up in a hotel room saying, my friend is dead, and he isn't, he says a few pages later. But after that, basically, you, 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 it sort of evolves underneath your eyes. How, how do you go about setting up a book like that? You, I can't believe you just start writing and then you see where it takes you. Or does well, <laughs> I did, basically. Okay. Uh, but you know, for me, writing, I think the, bo the, the book, moves between times, but there is like, like I said at the beginning, there are three very different times. There were yeah. the 80s, 90s, and now in Mexico. So when I started to write, I wrote them. So I, I either wrote the 80s, moved to the 90s, came back to the 80s, came back to the 90s, and came back to Mexico. And as the book, and as the book progressed, then you, you see some other times. But you know, it was very important for me when I write the 80s and I write the 90s, to not write it from his perspective, you know, when he's like uh, in Mexico City and contemplate the past and thinking yeah. about the past. It was important for me to write it as an experience of boys from their eyes and their yeah. tone and their understanding or, as, or, or the last year for of high school. So I didn't want it to be like a remember book. I wanted to really be inside the experience. Yeah. So, it was, so what was difficult sometimes was to change the perspective between children would they are 12 at the lessons when they are 18 and the narrator when he's like in Mexico. Yeah. And I think that as the book progressed, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was easier to, to bring other times. But, but you know, it, it wasn't planned. I had like two stories, the, 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 the battle against the high towers in the, in the, in when they are 12 and the, the death of the mother and the last year of high school when they are 18 and then me the Mexico. And then other thing, things came like they are. But you know, in Israel, when people read the book, uh, they didn't feel it's difficult. I think I heard it more in Netherlands and Germany sometimes in the beginning because the language is, is just longer. Every sentence that you can write in Hebrew in five words 
in Dutch it's like 12. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. The book, the book in Hebrew is, I think it's 280 pages. Really? So, okay. Yeah, you know, and so, so always with, with translation is, 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 is it's, you know, people ask you, why did you write so much? So you say, I didn't write it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> it, just, it was just 280 pages. Okay. You know, it explodes in translation. Because in Hebrew, Hebrew is a very uh, short language, you know, and the sentences are very, very short. Uh, so, uh, so this is why in translation, sometimes it, it look, the sentence look uh, longer, but it's not really. Yes, but it's also, it's also the movement of the sentences. It's like waves coming upon you. It's, it's like you have to be uh, willing and very concentrated to, 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 be, to be dissolved into the, into the language. I mean, that's, when do you know, Nir, for a specific book, what is the right tone for that book? Is it, is, is for your, in your experience, your tone different than, for example, in, 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 uh, in World oh. Shadow? Yeah. yeah. But you know, in World Shadow, you have these emails between the, the MSV company and the emails yeah. are very funny. And uh, so, so World Shadow, there is, there, there is also three different lines and each line, each line of plot has a different, uh, different tone. So, yeah. so basically, you know, it's always, uh, you need to just listen to the music uh, of the characters and of the atmosphere and what you feel about it and then to create this tone that, that it's, it's for the novel. And sometimes, you know, sometimes in the beginning you don't really feel it and you feel it as you progress. So for me, it's coming from just seeing this, this, uh, this world. You know, when you write a book, you basically build a world. And every uh, build a world, not just not a world that you type, like a world. And every every yeah. day you you enter you enter into this world and, and, and develop something in this world. And when you are inside, it's just a different experience that it's very hard to explain. But you 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 feel instinctively sometimes the tone. You know, you can think about it. You know that every action in a novel, it's uh, something you choose between ten ten thousand uh, options, right? You know, we, but how do you know what to do? You don't think about the whole 10,000 options. You have to have this instinctive feeling to the book and it doesn't come in the beginning. No. And the end of the book, Nir, before we go to some question of, our, of, uh, of the viewers, um, Joel asks Jonathan, are you, in your new book, are you going to write about me? And if you do, please make it not too emotional, but make it something good, make it something beautiful. So. Maybe it's a bit of a corny question for me, but I really want to know. Um, what, what, what do you think? Did, did you succeed when to, uh, to your friend? Um, Very corny question, but I, I really you want know, to you know. Actually, I, I had this uh, conversation uh, with Uri, uh, close to what happened in the novel. And, uh, and we both were, weren't very sentimental, but we, we, had, we had a lot of feelings. But we, and, I, and, I, and what was important for me not to create it as like a very, Sentimental, sentimental novel about the best friendship that ever existed, and then someone no. died, and it was to reflect uh, the complexity, the complexity, and the the real tension and the real love, but also the the other the other thing that we had because it was a very complex relationship between two two boys and then two men that used a lot of masks in order to survive, and had this man, manip manipulative way to work with imagination. Uh, and, and also they, they were sometimes felt afraid of their feelings. Uh, so I think that, uh, that, that, uh, that this, this was a novel that if he could read, he would feel that it uh, uh, represented uh, a lot of things that we experience, a lot of things that we, that we remember, but also that it represents this atmosphere that, that was between us. Yeah, well, it's very honest, very uh, yeah, very honest and also very raw a book because it's not only about the good sides of friendship, like you were saying, or the good sides of a love for a mother uh, and a child. It's it's a very brutal book in in many ways. It really cuts right through you, also because of the language. So, thank you for that. And um, I, I'm going to. I see a few questions near here in the bottom of my screen. Um, the first question uh, near is by Ernest van der Kwast. He's a Dutch writer whom you might know. Uh, Ernest is asking you, you talked about the things you lose by writing about memories, but what do you gain by writing about your memories? Well, I think that uh, there is something uh, uh, in, when, when you write about a memory and you come back 
to, in a way, to re-experience it, it's, it's can, it, can, it can create a movement in this memory. You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's not frozen anymore because you are, you're going inside it and you start to write it and, all, and naturally you, you, sometimes you change it, but you work with it, you, you make it. And, 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 and for me, when I really immerse myself into a memory, what I always feel that you know, a lot of other memories come. It's yeah. like you're digging inside these memories and, and then there are, there are a lot of memories that coming because you dig to this memory that you didn't really remember that you remember. So it's like, I think it's a very interesting experience that you, that, that you discover beneath this memory, also other memories that sometimes change this memory or put it in different perspectives. So I, I always felt that, that to, write, to write your memories or to go, go back to your memory and to really write it from the, from a, you know, from the, from the, from the experience that you had back then, not, not from now. Really to, be, to try to be inside it, it's a very interesting experience because the way you start to, to, to feel it and to see things inside that you didn't really see before. And sometimes you can invent them, sometimes they can be real, sometimes it could be a mixture, but it, it makes it something different. Yeah, is it, is it for you, is it a kind of state you're in while you're writing and, and going back to the memories? Is it, a, is, this, is it very easy to enter that, that particular state? Uh, because no. at the beginning of the no, it's not. No, not at all. Because at the beginning of the conversation, sometimes your wife is calling you, and and you've been writing for hours, and you're really there. So it must be quite hard to get away from that at one point. But it must also be quite hard to to re-enter again. I, I think How does that work? It takes me like uh, one hour, or maybe even more. Sometimes two hours. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, listening to music, uh, you know, just to. Uh, I don't know, it's like, uh, I don't know how to explain it really, but in the beginning, uh, always for me, nothing really happens. And then you're starting to see it, you know, uh, you're starting to see it and, and sometimes it's coming in one flash and sometimes it comes very slowly, but it never, ha never happens in the beginning. No. Uh, yeah, no, it's like, it's like, it's in a way it has this, it's close to getting to a certain trance. Yeah. When you are not really aware of the time here and you don't really, you listen, you, you hear a lot of songs, but in some, sometimes always when I listen to, to songs, when I'm writing, I lose, I lose the, the, the time essence. And then I said, how, how, how did I come to this song? It's like the, the 40 song. I didn't feel it all, all this time passed. And, and I think that this is something that you feel when you're writing. And, and so, so it's, it's getting yourself into this position. And, and no, sometimes in life, when my son was born or when my son was in sick, when my son needs me, I just don't want to do it. No, because no. It, it, you, don't, you won't want to get away from that and, and, and be in another place. I, mean, I don't want to do it at all, you know. Sometimes also, I just feel it. I just don't want to do it at all. No. Uh, and not just the memories part, just to immerse yourself in this world, you know, think about good people, uh, you know. So sometimes in the morning, I had to get inside Lublin in 43, the deportation of the yeah. Jews. Sometimes you just don't want to do it. You just don't, no. don't, you want to do something else. Very good. So what do you do when you don't, you're not writing or playing imaginary games with yourself? Oh, you know, I have this, this uh, work, you know, I, I, I give lectures, I teach creative writing, uh, I sometimes edit books, you know, there is other obligations uh, okay. that you have to do. I correspond with my editor in the Netherlands, Peter, and ask him, uh, uh, did we choose a cover? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you like the cover in the Netherlands? It's the Israeli cover. Okay. Oh, it's an Israeli cover. Sorry, Israeli cover. so it's a good cover. <laughs> Excellent. Um, another question there. Um, okay, this question is asking: Would you ever want to write about a friendship from Joel's perspective instead of Jonathan's? Uh, yes, I would. I don't know if I will do it, but. Uh, because you know, I, I'm very curious about it, and I and I was more and more curious when I wrote the novel, because uh, because Yoel is is different than Uri. He's a very complex complex character. Uh, you don't you don't really grasp him all the time. You know, uh, no. he's, uh, sometimes in, in high school he becomes part of everyone. When they are very small, he's like with with Jonathan in the imaginary game. Then he doesn't want the imagination. He betrays him. He becomes a lawyer. Uh, then he goes back to, then he claims that he's the only one who protects uh, their childhood. Uh, so naturally, I, there, there is this desire to see what my friend saw. 
and to, to see the world through his perspective. This is something that I always wanted to do even before he died, it was something interesting for me. But uh, I don't know if, it, if it's possible to me to be in this position. No. Uh, uh, you know, mentally. Uh, I don't know if it's possible after writing all this novel, if you want to come back to the same, to the same scenario. Uh, but but, uh, but there, there were like uh, some readers that asked me about it, uh, uh, but, but uh, I don't feel I want to go back it right now. No. Uh, to, this, uh, to, this, to, to see it from your perspective. But I, I think that you can see in the book that your perspective is different. As children, if you, if, because, because of the difference even in the events, you know, uh, the, the most important event in the book that Yoel was beaten by the uh, Hightower kids and this was led them to revenge and to all this happened and, and, and it led them to the, to the Vadi in the fog when they lost each other and they stopped being friends. It didn't really happen. No, exactly. Yoel, Yoel lied about it because he wanted to, to, ima to imagine these things and, and he never told Jonathan about it. Only Jonathan understands it when they are driving in this car in Ireland and Yoel tried to kill them maybe. Yeah. So I think it was very, it would be very challenging for me, but, but you know, it was, it was, uh, it, there is also this desire to go someplace else. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, um, um, Shira is asking, the relation between Jonathan and Joe reminds me a bit of the two boys in The Kite Runner, by Khalid Husseini, I think, where one betrays the other. Is it also a form of betrayal between the between the boys? Well, I didn't read this uh, specific book, no. but, I, but but I think that that uh, on the on the engine of the friendship uh, inscribed the betrayal and the love. Yeah, because because there is no possibility for such a strong friendship and without. such a symbiotic friendship without a desire to live yeah. and to betray. And I think that this is something they struggle all their life. And I think that in every, you know, in every friendship, there is this possibility of betrayal, you know. And, and also, you know, sometimes a betrayal, it's not really a betrayal, you know. Two people love each other, and then one of them stop loving. And this is like a huge betrayal, you know. You, you, know, you build your life around this person, and then you stop loving you, and you cannot force him to love you, right? I think it's the same in, in friendship sometimes, you know, that you, you cannot control the mind of the other person. And in any given any given moment in your life, it can it can just be gone because yeah. you want something else. And I think this is a very big fear of both of them uh, that it will happen. I think Jonathan is more fearful about it because Joel is more is more soci socialized than Jonathan. It is more like charming people, and, and Jonathan is is afraid of it. And, and so so I think that that in each close relationship like this, there is this possibility of betrayal, and then. The reaction to betrayal is it's sometimes try to hold it stronger, and when you try to hold it in a stronger way, it can really make the betrayal come come even uh, sooner. Yeah, but Joel was actually also almost uh, holding it against Jonathan that he doesn't take it very seriously anymore. The imagining of of things. I mean, jo for Joel, like like the thing that he imagined that he was being beaten by the by the boys from the high tower etc i mean for to him the act of an imagining is so strong is so overwhelming it needs to be uh, in the front of their relationship all the time that he holds it against jonathan almost that he's not that serious about it even though jonathan becomes the writer Joel is the one who yeah. his imagination is even more powerful it's a great one, but I think that, that, that as we said, in the beginning, in childhood, it was Jonathan that, that almost forced Joel to be inside the imagination, right? And then after it, Joel, Joel decided to leave this imaginary kingdom when they were a team. So Joel betrayed the imagination. Then Joel became a lawyer, so he was naturally out of all this. And then when he came back to his parents' house and all these pests started to hunt him, then he demanded, he demanded demanded that Jonathan will be there with him. Yeah. Because then he, he really came back in full, full heart and full soul and full body. But yeah. it wasn't always like this. And I think that, that this is a very big temptation for Jonathan when Joel, when they are 35, tells him, look, I'm here now. I like rebuild this kingdom that we have or this nightmare that we have. Let's kingdom that was also a nightmare. Come with me, come inside. Let's be there again. 
And I think that for Jonathan is a very big temptation. And the only thing that keeps him out of it, it's not, not really the writing, is his son and his wife. It's like Joel, Joel tells him, uh, I'm here and you have a son, a son and a wife. And that's the biggest difference between us. It's not the imagination yeah. that you really, really left for someplace else that you have to protect. You got away, he's saying. Yeah, you, you got away. Out. Yeah. And, and got, got away is a betrayal, but you know, this is what complex in the book. It's not that Jonathan was the, was the one that betrayed imagination. Each of them betrayed imagination in some points when he felt he needed something else. And he yeah. felt he needed to go, get away. I think it's the final question, uh, uh, Nir. Um, sorry, it's just it's just a comment from a fan that from someone who's saying I lived in uh, Safed around eighty five. Now reading the book and about the Wadi, the towers, he knows the place. I had the feeling to relive that time. It was a great pleasure to read the book. So thank you very much. A really nice comment. So my yeah. final question then, Nir getting back to the beginning of the conversation where you were saying that you spent these days playing with your boy, uh, imaginary stories, uh, uh, being a captain. Do you see the same wish to imagine and, and, and to build a world of his own in your own son right now? Yes. Yeah. I do. And, uh, and uh, I don't know if it's, it came for me, but you know, sometimes I blame myself, but you know, I also, I also really wanted him to play football with me all the time. Because I was a very good football player, but he doesn't want to do it. No. So I couldn't convince him and everything. But I think, you know, uh, since he was like three or four, we have this, uh, this imaginary world and imaginary world, and we had this, this close, uh, close relationship in the imaginary world, but also outside the imaginary world. But we, we, we love to, to imagine, to, to be in these walls and to be in this, and to build. Just today, you know, we play this game, and when, uh, when the bad people came to our house and we pretended we are, uh, other, we are other people and we gave them presents and the, inside the present there was a bomb. I thought it was really a bomb. Okay. So, so it was, it, it was but, but sometimes it's different. So, but I really feel it also helped him in the corona days and also in other, other places in his life because I think sometimes parents are really afraid of the imagination of their children. Yeah. They don't know, don't really, know how to be inside the imagination of the children. They don't really want to understand their dreams because it seems, it seems like, uh, like something that they not really grasp. It seems sometimes child, childish and it's more important for them to know what they ate in kindergarten. And I yeah. think that, that what, they wanted, what they ate in kindergarten is important, but also the opportunity for me to be with him in his, his imagination and to let him you know, let go and to, and to just to just be with him inside it and, and to have the, all this adventure together and to tell him, okay, you imagine this thing in the, in the beach, let's go there in the car. I think it's a, it's a great present for him also and for both of us. I hope it stays that, long, uh, that way for a very long time, uh, Nir, for the both of you, actually. And, Everything uh, changed, you know. Um, and, and let me conclude. Thank you so much for this conversation and for your beautiful, beautiful book. And I really thank hope you, next you time... For we speak to each other again in real life again. So uh, I also I wanted to thank, thank you and uh, Crossing Border yeah. and Border Kitchen uh, for this effort. And I wish you all the best. Also in Netherlands, uh, in the Corona and, uh, and life in general. Okay, thanks. See you again, Nir. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.